Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. It's a few minutes after 10, but I, I think um, if a few roll in, that would be okay. Well, happy Friday. Good morning. You're in the right place. Uh, thank you for joining in. Um, this is the, the second annual uh, Friday webinar series as part of the Minnesota Manufactured Statewide Tour uh, webinar series. So thank you for joining in. Um, just to get an idea of who is here so far, uh, we're just going to take a quick poll in the chat um, just to see where, which city throughout Minnesota everyone is from. So if you would just comment there in the chat, let us know which city in Minnesota you're from. Um, again, we're, we're really excited to offer this webinar series. It's designed to build and bring more awareness and engage more partners and manufacturers throughout Minnesota to join in this annual effort. I see we almost have everyone's responses here as they roll in. <laughs> Again, folks that are just joining, um, we're just asking that you would share which city in Minnesota you're from as we have a lot of different people located from different locations throughout Minnesota. So it's always interesting to see where everyone's from this morning. Again, if you're just joining in, we're just sharing in the chat which city you're from in Minnesota, um, just to get an idea of who is, who's all joined in today. All right, well, thanks for, for sharing where you're from. It's always fun for everybody to see that. Um, so please be sure to register for the next webinar on August 16th. We will go over our Minnesota Manufactured Sponsorship and Support Opportunities. And at that webinar, webinar, you will learn about ways that you can get involved to be part of the solution of bringing awareness and recruitment of the next generation of workers in manufacturing. Um, also, I just wanted to point out that this webinar will be recorded. There was many emails asking um, for that and it, it is recorded and will be posted on our website. So the agenda or goals for today's webinar are to, well, I plan to cover the Minnesota manufacturing workforce crisis and why the Minnesota manufactured tour is so important and the impact it can have. I'll also share results from 2023. I plan to share our stats and outcomes. I will talk in detail about getting an event started how to do that, key considerations for planning and hosting events. I'll also go over the event registration and ways to get involved. And there will be time for questions. Um, so, so feel free to hold those to the end. This is an exciting initiative that continues to have a great impact for Minnesota and our future workforce and to show them firsthand the realities of modern manufacturing. Um, here's a quick overview of our center of excellence for those who may not be familiar. There are eight centers, um, eight centers of excellence in the Minnesota state system. They were established uh, by the Minnesota State Colleges and Universities that serve um, other industries such as agriculture, engineering, energy, health, IT, transportation, and of course, advanced manufacturing. So while we serve the entire state, our center is hosted by Bemidji State University. There are 31 colleges, 25 technical and community colleges, and five universities offering certificate and degree programs in Minnesota. And we work to support their efforts. Our center's priorities align with the Minnesota state system priorities, which are to engage industry, enhance education, and inspire students. This effort that this is an effort that really engages industry um, and, and really accomplishes all of those goals, uh, the Minnesota Manufacturer Tour. And so our mission is careers in manufacturing. We want, we want to help recruit and educate the next, the next workers in the industry. Um, so currently throughout the nation, there are 4 million jobs that need to be filled by 2030. And likely that over 2 million will go unfilled. So that can have a huge trillion dollar impact on our nation's economy. And of course, those are very scary numbers um, also for Minnesota. So we are here to really come up with workforce solutions and offer diverse and inclusive opportunities as well. And really make sure we are helping students 
and in the spaces of promoting manufacturing and bringing awareness to the exciting careers the industry offers and working to change the perceptions so that people, students, um, anyone that's looking for an exciting, rewarding career path will consider and investigate a manufacturing career. So we know that students have influencers in their lives. They have caregivers, educators, and parents who are part of that process of helping youth choose their next steps and career path. So it's really important that uh, to engage all of the audiences uh, when you're hosting a tour of manufacturing, um, that influence and work in partnership with that effort. So we try to really engage our regional community, statewide, local schools, community colleges, technical colleges, and create a very you know, compelling content and experiences. So not just telling, but showing these experiences through this effort. Again, high school statistics remain to be pretty alarming um, in the area of interest and awareness. So this is why we're, we're um, you know, really excited about everyone getting involved in this effort to change these percentages. Um, it's another reason why efforts like this are so important throughout Minnesota. So the statewide tour of manufacturing, overview and impact. This effort works to help educate the public, increasing awareness of modern manufacturing practices and highlights the innovation that is prevalent in the industry. By attending a tour, people learn about manufacturing facilities throughout the state and the importance of manufacturing, improving the perception. Um, it demonstrates positive career opportunities in manufacturing and engages industry and influencers. So you know the buzzwords, dark, dirty, dangerous, hard, low light, low paying, and not a job you want to have for your child or um, in the future. And this is, that has completely changed. This is the work that needs to happen to change those terms, those words, the perceptions of all of the audiences. So the goal is to increase statewide awareness and come together as partners to have a big impact and change those perceptions. There's is a career in manufacturing really for everyone? And often it may be in your own backyard. You see these facilities all the time, you drive by them, but you might have, you might not have any idea what's going on inside or the careers that that facility offers. So manufacturing jobs are high paying today. They make a difference and it is a great career path. October in Minnesota is manufacturing month. It used to be um, aligned with Just Manufacturing Day, and our governor made a proclamation that Minnesota is going to celebrate, bring visibility to the industry throughout the entire month in October. So, which now there are 40 out of 50 states that get involved with this October effort showcasing manufacturing in their states. And so we're very excited that we're representing Minnesota. Um, and we're, you know, so grateful that, you know, we're one of them. Um, and that we're not only cele celebrating manufacturing for the month of October, um, but we welcome tours to happen throughout the year. And so this effort can continue to happen, um, but you're definitely going to see a lot of energy and awareness around manufacturing during the month of October. Oop. Okay, so we have, this is a statewide effort. And so we have a lot of partners in collaboration. Um, local workforce boards come together, workforce development offers, officers and directors. There's um, DEED, Department of Employment and Economic Development Workforce Representatives, a career force, a different manufacturing associations, chambers of commerce and industry are great to reach out to for starting points. In fact, we have their contact information listed on our website. You will see this this nine regional map, and you're able to find a point of contact that you can reach out to if you have any questions um, following up from this webinar or for how to uh, create an effort in your area. Um, if you want to, you know, reach out to a school and that is new to you, or if you need to reach out to a principal to help guide you to the right office at schools, if you wanted to engage with a school and have um, different classrooms or a school participate in a tour. 
these are the partners that make the magic happen. They are the identified boots on the ground that annually have activity, have tours, have different events throughout the month of October, and that throughout the state have a dedicated effort to serving manufacturing, to serving in this capacity, um, bringing together groups of people and engaging schools to host facility tours. And so you'll find very specific points of contact um, on our website. And these are the different partners that have came together um, to join in this collaborative effort. So the center's role is to lead at a high level the statewide collaboration to join together statewide and bring awareness to the industry it's, and it's, it's exciting career opportunities. So we work with partners, um, we collaborate, we provide outreach, resources, promotion, and we really serve as that high level megaphone, um, providing that visibility to the industry and really working to make sure that you know, we're highlighting um, its exciting career opportunities, really promoting Minnesota manufacturing programs, education programs and certificate programs throughout our state and really serving in that space of serving industry to help them um, continue to work on this perception issue and to also recruit their next worker. So we stay abreast of the state and national efforts for the industry and um, we, we really look to you know, support all of the engagement strategies that our different regions have. And so um, with this effort, we also host a statewide awards banquet to celebrate manufacturing and these efforts that have um, that, that that have joined in all of our collaborative partnerships. So here are the results from last year. Um, Post COVID numbers are back and rising with over 8,200 manufacturers throughout Minnesota. There is certainly much more work to do, um, but this is you know statewide. There's now over 1,300 educators that have attended a tour of manufacturing, over 1,500 employers have participated in hosting a facility tour, and there have been over 2,300 manufacturing tours from 2011 to 2023. And so here's looking at our 2023 results and overall. So you can see uh, the orange squares are, are what I just shared about our 2023 results, and then in the blue, our overall results. So this tour began as a small collaboration of partners in 2011, um, representing the manufacturing industry, of course, and different association partners and different partners that I explained, um, you know, are part of this collaboration, but we've certainly grown those different groups of points of contact that help in this capacity. Um, so really our goals have really increased over that 2011 period of time. Um, and, you know, 2022 is really a transitional year. Uh, we had a lot of manufacturers that were not comfortable hosting facility tours and uh, we moved to a virtual virtual statewide tour and now it's back to um, having open house facilities and, um, and definitely a lot of energy behind bringing this back to full speed ahead in the future. So we're really excited about the growth for 2024. And we're looking forward to seeing that. And, you know, it's all about the outcomes. I love, you know, the success stories, the testimonials. That is what it's about. It's about making that difference. So here's one testimonial. My middle school students enjoyed the tour. One of the students talked about wanting to fix robotic arms for his career. He talked about this after we visit, visited the 3M plant. Some more compelling testimonials. Um, I'll just you know read a couple here. As a project lead the way middle school teacher who teaches an intro to engineering course at a computer science in a computer science class, I understand the need for increasing the number of people working in the industry, specifically the manufacturing industry, and understanding how technology works, collaboration with others, and critical thinking skills are in an increasing need in the industry. So while on this tour, my students were able to view these skills in action in the real world skills they've been working on in the classroom. Um, another great testimony about the tour, I feel the Minnesota Manufacturing Tour is a key component in my curriculum that helps bridge theoretical classroom learning with real world activities. And yes, even for middle schoolers, 
And the manufacturers on the tour were gracious hosts. The tours were educational and our students did a great job at interacting with the tour guides. So some really positive feedback from our educators. Um, when tours register or are registered, you will find them on our interactive map located on our website. So we're in the process of getting um, just in the next couple of weeks, a really new, fresh, amazing website that will be up and running. Um, and so this will look slightly different, but um, you'll be able to see exactly what it looks like uh, with the map and the different locations. There are some tours that are already posted and they'll continue to post, um, you know, pretty ongoing here in the near future as we have a lot of regional a lot of regional partners that have already planned a lot of activities in their areas and are working to plan those tours in October. So a lot of a lot of the kickoff effort with some of that regional planning happens pretty early as they've gotten more and more um, consistent with their planning process. So I'll talk about that timeline as well. So hosting a statewide tour event. The statewide tour can be celebrated throughout the entire month of October and beyond. So it's okay if it's any time. Um, like I said, here in as far as the as far as the center and what we have supported, some tours happen consistently in the spring is a better time for schools to go on a tour or a community. So again, this is not just October, but we are bringing help bringing that awareness to that to that month um, where manufacturing is featured in Minnesota, but. Registering events is, is really important so we can measure the impact and set goals and grow the effort. Um, we have roughly, again, over 8,000 manufacturers throughout the state. So the vision is to get at least half or more engaged at this effort. So there is no one size that fits all. We advocate for in-person tours are certainly the best to capture attention and engage students with activities. But we also realize that not all manufacturers can easily host a tour. So that's when you take it to them, that's when you take it right to them and you have a manufacturing expo or you offer virtual tours. There's a lot of um, creative ways to get involved um, by showcasing manufacturing career. So you can you know, make it what works best for you and set those goals and what the pathway is going to look like. Typically the type of events are facility tours, students and educators and students can see the school applications and see themselves, as I shared in those testimonials from educators, finding something else, um, finding something else so we are still able to engage audiences is certainly, you know, always, always, it's not a one size fits all. So community event, you can look, it could look like a community is coming together and everyone is hosting an event. Um, potentially there's a group of leaders that are help quartering that coordinating that. So multiple stops, um, that would be part of a community event. We have had some large science centers or convention centers that set up manufacturing experiences to have an event to learn about some of the hands-on skills in manufacturing. Also educational fairs, community and technical colleges come together and, and host open houses of their manufacturing programs to show what you know, they're doing um, in their in their college, in their school, and what students can learn about. Highlighting the technology is key uh, that is available, that could be worked on, that you would experience working with um, having a career in manufacturing and an opportunity to invite manufacturing into the facilities. So an educational fair, you know, you can bring the industry in. So it's a good opportunity to celebrate how all of your programs can fit into the industry. You could also have a community celebration, celebrating manufacturing in your community. We host a celebration of manufacturing banquet, honoring all of the work that's done statewide, all of our partnerships, bringing that visibility to manufacturing careers, and then engaging students um, with that celebration. So having just a, a, a celebration, shining the light on all the manufacturers in your community is a great idea. Uh, a manufacturing expo, out in another, you know, facility, in facility booths, you could see different concepts. There could be a company family day right at your facility. You know, we have a lot of kids that work in manufacturing, 
their parents might work in manufacturing. They have no idea what their parents do. So this is an opportunity to celebrate, you know, employees and facilities and create this culture of recruitment of different, you know, families um, getting inspired by what their family members do in manufacturing. They might potentially even work there. Um, you could kind of make it a really big company family day and have a food truck giveaways, you know, celebrate the employees. It's really a retention tool and a culture, a work culture tool. So go out and, you know, you could also share, you know, do a presentation or um, share a story or even read to schools. Um, you know, there's some great manufacturing books out there for the younger audiences and just going out and sharing some of those those stories and then also challenges or competitions you know those are also super fun a lot of students you know get burnt out of the virtual so they could really you know really use some hands-on um, fun activities or fun competitions or challenges you know perhaps in their classroom so you could have you know and a live interview in a classroom, or they could watch a video of your company and then you could ask them questions. That seems to be really effective, um, much better than you know just the standard school day where they might watch something they can't talk to somebody live or ask those questions. Um, you could also come equipped with some video of your company or sharing a story or something like that, but lots and lots of ways to host an event during um, the, the Minnesota Manufactured Statewide Tour. So some key considerations for event planning. What are your goals? What is your company wanting to get out of the event? Really think about that. Work towards that goal, whatever type of event is that you plan. So also, of course, thinking through, okay, here's your goals, but also what is your budget? Just doing something, going to the classroom, thinking future-wise, having that plan, but budgeting some dollars to expand these recruitment efforts, events, you know, think strategically to expand things. So if you can't do as much the first year, maybe you set aside, you know, more of a budget next year. So how successful, and then also measuring, you know, how successful were any past events? Talk through maybe what went well, what didn't go well as you set some goals moving forward. And then what facilities, are technologies best going to highlight your work now? So make sure that you're highlighting that new technology or into the future. So based off of the target audience of your tour, what will it look like when they are ready to join the workforce? And what would guide them into the industry or into a career at your facility? So really think strategically about the audience that's coming and what they can expect into the future and what maybe you're anticipating their needs are. You know, maybe it's all about making a difference and work-life balance and creating a culture opportunity. And what are you going to speak to in terms of that? So what processes or careers you want to highlight to focus on and get those students interested in those types of roles in the future? So it's not about highlighting yourselves in the current state, but just keeping that audience in mind, what what resonates with them in their, in you know, and, and how they might be inspired. So noise can also be an issue. Please make sure that they can hear you in a manufacturing facility that can be a pretty big issue. So as you're you know, managing what you're going to do, really make it worth their time. Maybe less is more. So if you just you know, can coordinate it, so you speak to them first, show them some new technology, talk to them about the plans for the future, speak to them and the terms that they would understand. Um, and then, you know, really think through how you're gonna measure the success of, you know, your tour or having that group of, of students. Maybe you wanna create a survey and see how you can improve each time or what they'd like to see differently. Um, if they were going to choose to make that next step or be excited about a career in manufacturing. So definitely technology. Um, and then, yeah, I can't, I can't say it enough. Really think about your target audience. We put a big emphasis on students who are the influencers. Think about that. Students are really the central focus, but expanding out and looking at what age of students, types of students. Some companies target just STEM classes, but also look 
at all students. That doesn't mean that they are a great fit for the industry for seeing all the career opportunities. You know, for example, there might be students that are great at marketing, great at finance. Manufacturers need those positions as well. Sales, marketing, you know, the industry offers so many positions, human resources. Also, look at diversity. Is there a group that is underrepresented that you want to bring more in? You know, what are your plans? What is what is your strategic plan to do that? So maybe open up a tour for the community. Think about offering multiple events. How are you going to reach each audience? Schools are going to be going to start planning those field trips now, you know, as one audience, but also think through who else could you open your doors to? So really key considerations for just event planning. You know, it's really important that manufacturers are sharing these stories. Um, it's a it's a proven recruitment effort. And so just really talking through talking through that. Sorry about that. Who is your primary audience? So really, really thinking through the possibilities, the goal is employee retention, also influencers, the future of manufacturing. So changing perception, all of those things. So we put a big emphasis on students who are influencers. Students are a central focus, but expanding that out. Um, again, I talked about STEM classes being a primary focus. Um, but maybe opening up a tour for a community, think about offering those multiple events, um, elementary, middle school, high school, recent graduates, college tech programs, influential adults, career changers, and current employees. So you know, there's identifying a primary audience, who are the different groups, really thinking through who that might be. And then so in planning your event, we are here to give you some things to think about. So you always want to, to gauge the impact. You know, you could have an entry survey. Everybody comes in the door and have an informal poll, raise your hand, or, you know, uh, electronic poll, formal or info, informal, and see that the event, so you can gauge interest, see, see how they're liking the event, what brought them there, what they maybe want to take away, um, what, you, what your goals are. Um, and you know, certainly learning about ways to improve. There is a resource called mentimeter.com that could be used for you know, a simple um, entry poll or survey. So thinking through some of those, I'm sure there's many more now, um, but thinking through some of those opportunities would be a good place to kind of think through like surveys, entry polls, that type of thing. So always good to have leadership involved to welcome the guests and to share the story of the company. And, you know, that can be really compelling. Um, why they started, what, you know, they love about uh, manufacturing now, how it's made a difference in their life. You know, personal stories are, are a very big deal. So engaging the audience and share what the company does. So a high level of how important it is um, to, it is that makes a difference of what you do. So getting your younger employees involved is really key to students will be more engaged when they're talking to someone that is more relatable to them. So if you can think about choosing those employees that have that story where they did choose the career path in manufacturing and sharing how they got there and, you know, what is their life like now and what is their future and, you know, what do they love about the industry? And certainly, certainly highlighting those happy employees that really love their career they love the culture, they are challenged, they are motivated, they are appreciated, and they really love um, where they work and their future. Um, and they they love what they do every single day, which is, which is so important. So have hands-on activities, think about how to engage the audience. So invest in these experiences. Nowadays, it's all about a selfie station, simulators, something they can do something they can use their hands to do, some experience they can have that they can talk about and share. So also give youth an opportunity to interact and talk. Um, so we're just not you know, inviting them in for some boring presentation, like have something planned for them to do and see and get engaged with. Have a discussion you know, with your employees so that they can also provide that 
those ideas and ask them those questions about, you know, what their ideas are and then invite them to be part of the process so that they can ask questions and also help answer about their career and have the company share how they achieve their goals collectively for um, not only for the tour, but how they achieve their, their goals as a facility. So set, set some goals and objectives for this whole experience. Um, one really high level multiple facility manufacturer example that has really placed an effort on tours, they set their goals. They have a huge effort internally on this because they know that they need to recruit their next worker. So setting goals, um, this high level company, uh, you know, they set large goal and, and they set very specific ob objectives as to how they're going to achieve that. So they see it as how do you inspire students to consider a career inside their facility? And they put together specific strategies and objectives and everything is listed there. So breaking down what the objectives are. So three main things, what do you have going on at this company? Is there design, engineers, quality and testing and showing these students in a very hands-on way, how, how do you engage students? Give them the full perspective of what the job entails and give them a full perspective of what their future may be for the rest of their life. They also, this company, in fact, um, the high level company is Toyota as the example. They do target KPIs for each of their three objectives. They're very serious about these facility tours and they have a whole effort around it and they've received a ton of success doing it. So in each category, they have very hard targets and have strategies to achieve those, to make sure they are working with partner schools, they're targeting the same people, they have the right types, giving the right information, they're driving them to the career portion of their website. Then they look at the results. They track tracking targets and looking at their goal with tours and the goal that their company is there. They, they have a very specific goal that they want to share that their company is a great place to work. And each year they look at all their goals and if they met them and then measure and change the goals in terms of recruitment. So they, it's all about making sure that manufacturing is a really cool place to work that there's a, there's, they build a team, they set a budget, they help guide the activities to corporate social responsibility, corporate communications, which includes getting volunteers involved, government industry relations to make sure the photo ops are there, are, you know, and the, and the good work they're doing is being shared out and invite them to see the good, you know, the good culture, um, the good facility work that they're doing. So this particular company, they have uh, a team dedicated to this effort. Um, they also have site leads with their multiple locations. So that is why they organize this and, and coordinate this across the entire country. So um, they do reflections each year. There's certainly areas of improvement. Those would be ways to measure the impact. Um, students love hands-on activities. They've learned that it brings high school students out of their shell. You know, they, they love obviously they would love like a racing simulator, some simulation activities um, in terms of that specific organization. But um, that company is working on how to meet students where they are, allowing them to take selfies where they can so that they can sell the brand too um, and the manufacturing facility for them. So that's their goal to constantly look at how to make it exciting and entertaining and hands-on for the students to engage them and get excited. So the hands-on activities they get they, they can get them uh, you know, into infrared cameras, 360 cameras, and doing virtual trainings or simulators as a way to engage them. So certainly, you know, talking through all the high salaries, obviously having any food is a good idea, swag if possible, really making it um, a great experience where you've thought through how to really host people at your site and really tell that story. So sample timeline, well, we're sitting in, you know, the very first part of August. Um, so the sooner the better, you know, typically beginning in the spring, late spring is when that those regional activities happen. So um, the sooner the better, it's not too late now, you know, you still have a couple months to coordinate something and reach out to schools, you know, having an internal kickoff and identifying the goals and funding needs 
um, key roles and timeline, determine the audience, start connecting with schools, finalize date of the event, register event, you know, having that full plan, logistics, strategy, engaging activities, obviously promotion plan as well. So anybody that you can engage, if you can engage, you know, all the, the public relations, social media, television, news, save the date flyers. It's just like you're hosting, you know, a, a major event at your facility, just thinking through all the ways that you can promote that. And then, you know, obviously in September, you're going to confirm attendees and finalize those materials. So um, definitely the sooner the better, but there's still time to kind of finalize everything and pull everything together in terms of promoting it in August for that um, October promotion. So getting started in 2024, um, go to our site. You can find resources that support your event, register your event, certainly leverage the hashtags, 2024 statewide tour, update your materials with the latest Minnesota manufactured statewide tour logo. So we can email that to you directly. Um, so just reach out to Carissa or email one of us. We have multiple contact information on our website um, for you to access reaching us. Um, promote your tour locally. Take Certainly take pictures, share on social, report results, share those success stories, share them with us, share them out um, with your different channels and plan to host again next year by measuring the success. So again, internally setting those goals and objectives, the goal is to engage students, think of ways you can offer hands-on experiences um, and you know, really organize your tour so that the career opportunities are forefront. You know, your goal is recruitment, recruitment, recruitment into the industry. So um, so registering your event, make sure it's a shareable link, increase attendance, raise statewide awareness, demonstrate continuity, advocacy, collaboration and partnerships and community and regional impact. So the goal is to have and increase attendance and add culture and awareness as well. So it's bigger than just a one-off event. It's an effort for Minnesota manufacturing. So just make sure that again, that link is shareable, you share it out, share it out, register your event. It will pop up on our map. Look at the statewide impact and why register your event beyond just showing up there. You know, there's a landing page when you register, it's a shareable link that you can share out. Educators or the public can see the map and get in touch with the facility or the regional champion. So it helps increase your attendance. Um, it helps other industry partners join in the effort for having that large statewide impact. And it helps to raise the awareness of manufacturing in the ways that we are all collaborating and pulling together to impact the future of this industry. So it demonstrates that community of manufacturers and all of us throughout Minnesota are really trying to pull together a whole lot of partners and groups to get involved and show this, this statewide impact. Um, you know, registering your event, it doesn't cost anything. You know, we can help you get registered as well. So, you know, depending on the scale event, that is where you would maybe set the budget for some things, but just registering your event, it doesn't cost anything to do that on our Minnesota manufactured site. Um, and we share that out. So if a manufacturer would like to participate in bringing recognition to the industry and opening their doors, the first step is to register your tour on our site, www.mnmfg.org. So remember, if your company has multiple locations, Register all of them for sure, or multiple tours that helps, certainly helps with the metrics statewide. And we take and measure the activity and locate funding to support and grow this effort and to support the transportation costs statewide for schools to attend a field trip. And so the, you know, we're really, um, we're really committed to registering the impact. And so just registering your event not only brings attention to your facility, shows the continuity, um, but also helps us, you know, really grow this effort and try to make a difference in the industry. So measuring impact, we are here to help. Um, we will post survey instrument on our website and a success story outline as well. And so we'll have those here in the next couple of weeks as our brand new website is going to be up and, and rolling. 
and promoted. So you can look for that to also help you measure your impact. And then, you know, here's just an example of some results from surveys that we have uh, measured the impact. And that has been a reason why we continue to do this effort and focus our energy on growing it, on bringing more partners in and celebrating and raising the visibility of manufacturing is because of results like this. 83% were interested in manufacturing careers after they attended a tour. 90% of students were more aware of manufacturing careers after a facility tour. 80% thought manufacturing careers were good careers. And then facility hosts, 90% thought hosting a tour was worthwhile after they did. 90% had success with their tour attendees and 88% thought there was value in building the interest. I believe that those results are even higher um, because you know what other way are they going to actually see, hear, touch, feel, no, look into the culture. It's a, just a wonderful opportunity for uh, the industry to grow this statewide tour of manufacturing. Some tour hosts, um, some some testimonials there. One of them is, you know, opening doors immediately shows a return on events and an investment. You know, this Air Coca from Air Corps Aviation hired somebody that went on a tour. Um, another speaking to partnerships, partnering with Minnesota Manufactured is just one way to get involved to address the issues facing the industry. You know, it, it we're we're all joining in this effort here, so. Um, it's really important that that you see a return on investment, not only as as a facility owner, but just in terms of hosting an event and, and doing this, that you know the impact. And this work is really important to continue to do and to grow. So and sponsorships. So sponsorships are really important um, by supporting the Minnesota Manufactured Statewide Tour. Um, it helps us with career resources, continuing to develop career resources for all the different audiences. Um, toolkit development uh, it offers targeted visibility of your company, um, supporting that. It may be tax deductible. Um, sponsorships help support the growth and outreach, and it supports community impact and advocacy. Sponsors, you know, sponsorship recognition, recognition would be um, you know, you would receive certificates and also can um, lead to, you know, helping to support those student awards. And um, you can learn more about that in our next webinar that's coming up on August 16th on sponsorship and support opportunities. And some of our free resources. Here's a list of our many resources that we have identified and invested in as a statewide tour planning committee that were needed to have in place to support areas of the tour to make them stronger. So we also have a manufacturing tour guide, a teacher tour guide to assist teachers in prepping their students for a tour experience. We have developed other templates to assist with tour coordination and promotion, such as a press release template, PSA templates, radio ad templates, letters to parents, other educator resources are also available to support and enhance classroom tour experiences, such as a teacher guide curriculum. We are hoping to offer a merch store in the future, pre-branded statewide tour um, collateral, t-shirts, safety glasses, and we'll continue to work on those toolkits coming soon as a comprehensive um, tour toolkit or tour guide. Refining, you know, certainly um, some of the marketing and promotion is always something that um, that is needed. And these resources are currently free to use. So they're resources to help spread awareness of the Minnesota Manufactured Tour. So some of those very specific resources, you know, just getting into the audiences, we included within our tour site some additional resources we have developed and have identified to enhance the tour experience for both educators and manufacturers. So for educators, we have a teacher guide, a badge pathway, some career success skill modules, and youth outreach funding. Um, all of those are, you know, subject to change annually. Um, but we also have manufacturer resources. We have an adopt a school guide resource, links to industry news and job searches and career success skills modules um, as well for industry. 
So ways to get involved. You can host an in-person or vir virtual tour. Um, it helps you to recruit the talent you need, showcase your facility. You could sponsor a bus and or the, the Minnesota manufactured statewide tour as a whole um, to help us with that broader outreach and investment in the resources. And then promotion of your region and your community tours. So that would be a way to you know, get involved. Um, industry participation, showcase your facility, its career opportunities, support the promotion of the industry, support organizations working hard, such as the Center of Excellence for Advanced Manufacturing, um, really helping, helping to help you, working to help you. Sponsor the tour, recruit other manufacturers to join in the effort. And it's certainly a way to reach out to your local school. Um, educator participation. This includes colleges, college program events, open houses, outreach, recruitment. Have one, register it out and share it. Celebrate that you are a manufacturing educator. Really help make a difference for students and the industry. It's an excellent option for STEM educators, robotics coaches, or career counselors. And, you know, educators can also learn, have a learning experience for educators as well. So further resources to engage students about their experience. You know, you can really, you can really bring it full circle and, and make it a big event for your students alongside the experience of host of going on a tour. And then how local communities can get involved. Organize a community tour. You know, this is a picture of Alexandria Technical and Community College machine tool students. They embarked on an industry tour of manufacturing facilities in Minnesota in late September. They received some funding from a manufacturer um, that's in machine tool, but, you know, visiting facilities and, and all these employees, they're already, you know, students, but it, that's really important that these college students are touring facilities as well to determine which facility they want to work at. So organize school tours, promotion of your event in the statewide tour, virtual tour development. You know, you could have both. And obviously registering your tours. So communities can get involved by just identifying those leaders that care about, you know, the industry, which are typically these people. Chambers of Commerce have manufacturing members. Economic Development Authorities have manufacturing members. Business community members care. Economic Development care about how manufacturing, you know, is the backbone of typically most every community and so supporting that and getting together and getting involved. So these industry visits offer valuable insights to students. They provide them with real world exposure to the different processes and the opportunity to collect with, connect with alum working, alum working in these dynamic manufacturing environments. So uh, what is the goal of the video contest? We also have a video contest that we are offering to students. So if there's some educators on this call, I'm just bringing, put, pull, putting in a plug about our pretty new student video contest. It started last year, we had um, great results and these students were provided with some cash awards at our annual state Minnesota Manufactured Statewide Tour Banquet um, that was just in this last um, part of last spring. So the goal of this student video contest is to create a short video showcasing manufacturing careers and really illustrating why this career is a great career choice. Um, the student video contest is an opportunity for students to showcase and learn about technology and jobs in manufacturing and really, um, really highlight as they're taking, as they're sharing a video about what they're learning about manufacturing, highlight happy employees and why choosing manufacturing careers is a path to success. Highlighting positions and pay um, in a video, you know, these are different ways to kind of share out a short video and and um, have the opportunity to participate in a in a contest where you can win cash award prize from our center and be honored at a at a banquet. So now um, that concludes the webinar uh, content. So now is the opportunity to ask some questions or offer some feedback. If you have any stories to share that we can capture, please leave us your contact information. Um, 
or if you have any feedback, uh, we need to tell, tell the story. So please let us know. Um, that's what we're here for is to answer the questions and, and, and help to assist in this effort. So thank you for joining in today. And if you have any questions, now is the time to ask those. Hi everyone, this is Carissa Menefi. I'm the communication specialist at the center. Um, during this webinar, you've all been un or you've been muted with your videos off. I'm just going to make sure you all are unmuted now and able to talk. So if you want to ask a question, you can feel free to speak up or you can just drop your questions in the chat and we'll be monitoring them. We can answer them right now too. Thanks. All right, everybody's pretty quiet this Friday morning. So just so you know, you can reach out to us directly if you have any questions or feedback or comments or need additional assistance. Um, again, we have a, a webinar series. So the next one up is Friday, August 16th. And the focus will be on sponsorship and support opportunities uh, for the Minnesota manufactured effort. So make sure to register for that. We also have one dedicated to getting the word out and our, a deep dive into our support resources. And then lastly, you won't wanna miss this one. On September 13th, we have making the most of your event. So we have three of our um, industry partners sharing their best practices from hosting events almost, well, one of them almost hosts daily um, from Polaris, from Wyoming Machine and from Productivity. So we have three great industry partners on September 13th that are gonna share their really knowledgeable experience about hosting tours at their own facilities and different ways that they have learned, you know, how to do that better and how they've measured results and what it's meant for them. So, and uh, Jeremy shared uh, our website and to drop the questions in the chat if you wish or reach out to us directly. Here is my email address and phone number. And uh, most of you received the registration information. There should be some contact information on there as well. So thank you so much for your time. Looks like I'm finishing right on time. And I hope everybody has a has a wonderful summer weekend and hope to see you at the next webinar. Thank you.